Hovering over the floor of the Black Kin stands the magnificent Hooverdam. This is one of the greatest structures ever built, as it harnesses energy from the Colorado River to generate electricity. The Hoover Dam proceeds to inspire people all over the world with its amazing height and size. When Americans and Europeans started settling into the southwestern United States, the Colorado River was a great resource, but it was constantly overflowing from runoff and destroying farmers' crops. This was a problem for many citizens, impacting their food supplies, economies, and their homes. As the region became more populated, the demand for water in a dry era became greater. Soon, it became apparent that the Colorado River would need to be tamed and her resources better distributed. In 1928, Congress passed a bill leading to the development of the Boulder Canyon Project. But on October 29, 1929, the U.S. economy crashed, leading to the Great Depression. This devastated the American workforce, leaving 12 million people out of work, and 100,000 people were losing their job each week. As the nation was low on jobs and money was scarce, the Boulder Canyon Project was left hanging in the balance. Soon, people started settling into Nevada, anticipating that the project would provide work for many unemployed Americans. There were only two places that were close to the construction where the people could live. Las Vegas was nearby, but there would be a 30-mile trip between the site and home each day. Then there was Ragtown, which was a small tent town a few miles from the dam was being built. Ragtown was low on conveniences and had only a few stores, one of which was Merle Emery's convenience store, which provided food, water, and work. Ragtown was mostly made up of tents, cardboard boxes, or anything that would serve as a shelter. During the day, temperatures would rise up to 116 degrees and then drop drastically to mere 60 degrees at night. Because of these temperatures, 25 people died in the first month of construction. Herbert Hoover, the 31st President of the United States, worked hard to continue the project and in 1930, he signed an appropriation bill that approved the construction of the Boulder Dam. The Colorado River contract was a contract that would split the project into pieces for the seven states responsible for building the dam. Arizona, California, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming. All of these states got a share of the hydroelectric power and the lake that the dam was creating. This contract expires in 2017. It took some 200 engineers and drafters to design the dam. The design started in about 1920. Even so, the structure for the Hoover Dam changed many times. In this plan, there were no plans for power development, so provisions for the powerhouse were not included during the early design period. The final plan was finished in 1930. In the final design, the side channel spillways were attained, but they would be controlled by drum gates and connected to the diversion tunnels by incline shafts. The final design called for the diversion of the river via four 50-foot diameter tunnels driven through the walls of the canyon, two on each side. Two additional tunnels, one on each side of the canyon, would be driven to house penstocks that would supply water from the intake towers to the powerhouses. Six Companies Incorporated was the construction company that signed a contract to build the massive dam. The first step was to divert the Colorado River. It had to be dredged of deep silt and sediment to be able to have a foundation on the bedrock where the Hoover Dam would stand. Four diversion tunnels were built through the walls of the canyon that would redirect the flow around the dam there and join the river farther downstream. The next step was to remove the loose rock from the walls of the Black Canyon. Workers were suspended by ropes and secured to the rock walls and started removing the rock with jackhammers and dynamite. This was a very dangerous job. These people were called high scalers. At the time of employment, racism was a contributing factor in the making of the Hoover Dam. Most blacks were turned away from the job, and workers that were hired were often docked in pay or given demeaning jobs, for instance, debris cleanup. First concrete pouring took place on June 6, 1933. Although it seems like a simple task, pouring concrete for this huge structure would need a lot of thought put into it. Concrete releases heat as it cures and slows the hardening process which was the main problem that the designers had to contend with because of the large amount of concrete. 
Without a solution, the concrete would never harden to support itself and the force of the Colorado River behind it. To speed the curing process, thin steel pipes were installed which carried water to cool the concrete. Later, those tubes were filled with grout and left in place. In all, the Hoover Dam has 3,250,000 cubic yards of concrete, plus another million for the power plant, intake towers, and other support structures. That's enough concrete to build a two-lane highway from California to New York. Even today, the concrete is still warm and hardening in the thickest portions of the dam. The dam works by gravity. The weight of the dam has to be heavier than the weight and force of the water behind it for it to stay in place, hence the reason for the large size and thickness. Water that builds up behind the dam rises to the level where four pipe intakes are located. These pipes are called penstocks. The water flows into the penstocks and is conveyed by gravity into a turbine located in another building alongside the dam. The force of the water spits the turbine, which is connected to a generator. The generator creates electricity by spinning magnets around a series of copper coils, creating a flow of electrons. In that process, it creates 4 billion kilowatt hours of electricity, which is equal to 5.6 billion horsepower hours. Without this colossal amount of electricity being produced, Las Vegas would not have risen to become the huge metropolis. The massive body of water on the upstream side of the dam that was created is called Lake Mead. Lake Mead serves as many purposes, such as recreation, a source of drinking water for many cities in the southwestern United States, and irrigation for farmland. Lake Mead extends 112 miles behind the dam and holds approximately 9.2 trillion gallons of water. In 1935, the Great Dam was finally finished and two years ahead of schedule. The dam itself is 726.4 feet tall, 1,244 feet long, and 660 feet wide of the roofs. Hoover Dam was built for many reasons. One was to provide irrigation water flow to farmers in the dry desert area. Another was to control flooding after spring, which was constantly destroying crops. The last reason was to provide hydroelectric power for the people in the surrounding area. Although Hoover Dam provides many benefits to the region, it did have some negative impacts on the wildlife. Fish populations have decreased, and now four species of fish are on the United States endangered list. The Colorado River Delta has been affected. Almost no water reached the mouth of the river until six years after the project had been finished. Tremendous weight has put a huge indent on the Earth's crust. Altogether, the dam and water weigh 82 trillion tons. Because of the tremendous weight, nearly 6,000 tremors have been reported when there were none before the construction. A tremor is an involuntary shake or quiver, almost like an earthquake except much less. Hoover Dam has inspired many other dams, including the Imperial, Yuma, and Lugana Diversion Dam. Although many other dams rival over the Hoover, they owe all of their advancements to it. Originally, the Hoover Dam was named Boulder Dam. This was because the dam was first planned to be built in Boulder Canyon, but it was relocated to Black Canyon for better impoundment. Although the construction site was moved, the project was still named as the Boulder Dam Project. After, President Hoover's Secretary of Interior, Ray L. Wilbur, announced the name to be Hoover Dam. But Harold Ikes had Hoover's name removed because people did not want to remember the man that started the Great Depression. Later, when President Roosevelt was elected, Hoover's name was put back on the dam. During the construction of the dam, there were many accidents that resulted in serious injuries and deaths. There were many people who risked their lives and worked hard to complete this dam and should be remembered by this amazing accomplishment. Even today, after 75 years of completion, it is still a worldwide symbol of American culture, ability, and perseverance. Hoover Dam was the biggest dam of its time.